You need a diaper? I mean, you it was kind of pretty wet. I have diapers. I'll just, you know, layer two or three of them in there. Never trust a fart. <laughs> Never trust a fart. It was just because I'm, like, sitting with my ass all the way back up against my chair. Okay, no. No, 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 because one? you need to tell them that every part of your chair that you sit on is mesh. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't understand. It was pulling my cheeks at a weird angle, okay? Like, I had my it's back arched a little noise. bit, and okay. I went... <laughs> I think you need to go to the bathroom and check yourself. Oh, right now. Do we need to link the video? Because I'll link the video if I have to. I love that we go through all of this, like, right after we start recording. Mm -hmm. Best time ever. Mm-hmm. All right, so are we actually good to go at this point? I don't know. Are we? Did he did he spot check? Is he good? <laughs> Fucking people. <laughs> did he roll perception? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Better have been a critical fail. No poop. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Good. Good call. All right. So. When last we were here, we we're in the tower, the house of Thalvar. I successfully laid to rest the ghost and the bones and all that good shit of Thalvar himself and his fae spirit, friend, companion, support. And, uh,. Yeah, then we came back and uh, slept it off, and Galileo in the morning was like, Yo, dog, I'm feeling pretty good. What'd you do? And you guys were like, you know, just took care of some business. No big deal. And he was like, excellent. So now he's continuing on his uh, research studies. He was trying to decipher the journal and manuscripts that you had located in the library that were coded and you were not able to read. Any progress on that? So in his, in his current attempts, he has not made any substantial progress, but he told you that he will continue to work on it and will keep you up to date if he discerns any useful information. Sweet. <clears throat> Sweet. All right. So now can we go get paid? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Mention of money. Yes, you can. Uh, so yes, basically, uh, if you go back to the town square, you can meet up with the, uh, gold, the fuck, I can't remember her name. Hang on. Marigold? Marigold is yeah. the priest, I thought, though? So yeah. it's the yeah, other it one. Is, uh, Griselda. Griselda. So she is the leader. And she is the one that will be paying you for your troubles to assist in this particular incident. So, let's go back to town here. Let me change the map for you. <clears throat> Alright. So, with the house... With the house done and dealt with now, back in proper care, minus one weird ghost trying to perform his duties from a age bygone. Um, you guys go back to Town Square and you meet with Griselda, and she's like, "Oh, you guys uh, took care of business in the, in the in the house, I take it." Yes. Laid a spirit to rest. Oh, so it was a ghost. Interesting. Magical ghost, too, so. I suppose you'll want your pay, then. And she divvies out your guys' pay. Which is going to be 300 gold apiece. God damn. Hey, man, the Duke from Neverwinter, he's got money. Yes, Lord Daggleton Neverember has a lot of money. Ooh. 
I just uh, I just realized that these weren't visible to you because I had them on my map, and I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, wait, <laughs> those aren't on the right layer. Nice. Uh, uh -huh. Don't we still have to go back up to Neverwinter to get paid for actually like delivering the cart down? Yeah, yep. that is true. And we also have to contend with Scylla's um, mysterious Request. person. That bitch mm -hmm. is completely optional. And, and, and we also have to contend with the fact as we came down here, it looked as if something was brewing back at the wayside inn. Correct. We have to go to the wayside inn anyway because the map that we got had a faint marking around the wayside in yes. when we fucked around with the lenses. So, um, at the moment, <clears throat> that looks like it will probably be your task as Griselda doesn't have anything directly to offer you to do. And unless you would like to wander about the town and potentially pitch in in terms of the reconstruction you're welcome to but otherwise you know you're free to to roam and or do whatever other things you'd like i think at the moment we're better served going back to the wayside inn and making our way up to neverwinter to get paid for that from there if we want to we can head back down here agreed we also have a covered wagon no Mm hmm. That we do. <clears throat> How long has it been since we left Leyland and went to the other fuck off place and then came back? Probably about three, four days' time. Yeah. Well, technically now four because you had the one night inside the house, House of Thalvar. Can we stop by the Peculiarity Shop? I want to see if there's any... Sure. Let's go. Alright, so... Is everybody going, or is just Keto going? Yes, I will go. Might as well. Sure. Okay. I'll head that way as well. I grab right. the wagon and go to the north side of town and just wait. <laughs> All right. Our shit ready to go for today. Fair enough. All right, so uh, wandering back into the peculiarity shop, the uh, gentleman behind the uh, table doesn't really recognize any of you. Welcomes you into the shop once again. I want to discreetly take my squirrel out of my pocket and let him go find things as I'm talking to uh, this guy so okay so he, the squirrel is away doing squirrely things we were here a few days ago I was actually just here to see if you had anything new since we've been here last oh oh wonderful okay uh, yes let me see here what's come in recently uh, one second I have to do a couple rolls to find out if anything <laughs> perfect <clears throat> Ah, well, I, this wonderful trinket showed up the other day. I think maybe a, uh, a cunning individual such as yourself might uh, find its particular peculiarities quite interesting and useful. See, it is a, it is a can. Grabs this metal can, roughly shaped, kind of like a soup can. Both ends currently sealed. But uh, this is no ordinary can, see... If I were to tilt it to the side, as it goes and tilts it to the side, you hear the sound of some clanking glass inside. You see, there is a slight mystical power inside this can. The soul of an elemental has been 
fused and bound inside of it. You can harness its power just by holding this can. Can I hold my hand out and take the can? He lets you hold it. <clears throat> I shake it real hard. And you hear the glass inside going... Chick -chick 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 <clears throat> and his eyes kind of widen a little bit and he goes... Oh, well, I didn't suppose that would be one thing you would use the power of the elemental for, but I suppose to each their own. What, what power does this elemental hold? It's, in, it's attuned with the elemental energies of this area, mostly the storms. I have a bit of background in being a merchant, and I think that you, my friend, are trying to pull the wool over. I do not believe you. I would never do such a thing. I'm an upstanding individual. All of the, my purchases and wares have been purposefully bought, and I have all the right paperwork. There is nothing out of line. Do I believe I him? Go ahead and roll a perception. I can hear Knight in the background yelling, yeah, just buy it. <laughs> he, keeps, he, keeps, he keeps yelling it. <laughs> what, did, what did you say, perception? Yes, please. Oh, hold on, my Beyond 20 broke. <laughs> it's being finicky. As far as you can tell, as far as you can tell, he's not lying to you. How much are you asking for this mystical object? I was able to acquire it for probably about 10 gold, so I'd, I'd have to ask at least 15. It's quite a steal if you think about it, because it's the power of, a, of an elemental. How about 13 gold? Hmm, he thinks about it, kind of stroking his chin for a moment. Well, it's a little less than I was hoping to add on to my current expense for it, but I could take 13 for it. All right, deal, 13 gold. Uh, all right, uh, I'm just gonna take my mystical object that I'm gonna leave. Did Tosker find anything and just... All right, let's see what he found. All right, so <clears throat> in the clutched little hands of your darling little companion, he's holding a small empty vial that smells of perfume. Okay. Can I, can I cast, uh, can I ritual cast detect magic on this stupid fucking can I just bought for 13... Sure. So is it magical at all? It's a maraca. <clears throat> it does not emit any kind of magical glow. Okay. <clears throat> I'm done here. I'm gonna head to the gate. Yeah. I'm 
All right, so everyone, I guess, is slowly filing their way out to head to the north gate. Yeah. As we get to the gate and we approach Azzy, I just uh, take the can out of my bag and I toss it at him and say, got yes. you something nice. <laughs> What's it do? <clears throat> Shaky toy. Well, it's <laughs> magic. And supposedly it's attuned attuned to the storms around here, and I got it just for. So like, if I shake it, it's gonna make a storm. Um. Uh, well, it's more attuned to the storms. So you'd you want to shake it during a storm. There was a storm up north. Let's go. <laughs> I have a theory to test. All right, let's go. Yeah, sure. Let's let's go up. I'm pretty sure that our favorite tavern is probably in trouble given the storm clouds we were seeing. It's probably a shrine to Talon. <laughs> Judging by the way, by that note in the map, <clears throat> that would be fucking foul. No, I think it's a It'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Either way, yes, people we like may or may not be in trouble. I'm not getting paid for this. Why am I doing it? Okay, let's go. Because they might be grateful enough to pay us. Glory! Maybe we can end up owning the wayside after this and we can have our own <laughs> Don't and get Talia to too excited. Ground. Who cares that about happened. any of that? I've got a can to test out. But, that, but that's all you had to say, like, to Talia. To get her to start like heading down the road, even by herself, is just we may end up owning a business. I like business. Somebody's if wanted to go into business me. for a while. Yeah. If it, it enriches me personally, and I can enrich the lives of those around me by doing so, then yes, I should probably do it. I'm not a bad person. I just. You're just drawn that way? Think of myself way? first. I just think of myself first. In my coin purse, as in myself. Alright, so I cleaned up some of the lines without deleting everything by clicking on them mistakenly, so. <laughs> like that, but so be it. Alright, so, um. So. You guys leave Leyland. I was going to ask before we left Leyland, do they have a postmaster of some type? Yes. Um, before we leave as we're heading out, I head over to him, hand him a missive with a specific address on it to deliver to, and um, it has gold in it. It has about 70 gold in it for where it's going to for the package. It's part of my backstory which I gave you Junie. Yeah. So. Yep, no, that's totally fine. I, for that particular part of it. I I got it. And should should you need to ever disclose any more additional details that beyond what you want to vocalize ever, you can type slash W and then okay. John or or GM or whatever yep. and it'll send me a message yep. privately. So Yes, I do it all the time. Ha ha ha. Hey guys, newsflash, the rogue is whispering the GM. Alright, so, that being said. We are now on the road again. So, everyone's on horses this time. We have a nice carriage. There's goods in the carriage. Some people are in the carriage. Some people are riding goats. And we are making our way. So you leave on the road, and you just make your way north. Make good time, because there's not a whole lot of traffic heading north currently. You get to uh, roughly about... Let's see here. The wayside's probably about right here-ish. 
So you get to the intersection of the trail and the high road by about midday, shortly thereafter. Continue along your way, nothing of incident occurring on the road, and you make your way to the inn a little before evening falls. Are there lights on at the end as we're approaching? There are lights on at the inn. And at current, the storms are not present. The can. I shake my can vigorously. Okay. Can you uh, give me a... Uh, oof, what do I want to use for this roll? Um, hmm. Give me a... Uh, do they have an arcana listed? Or is yes. That, the they arcana. do? Alright, yes. Give me an arcana roll. So you hear the can shake, rattle, and roll, as it were, and you don't, nothing seems to really happen. Damn it. Does anything look out of place from our last visit? Uh, whoops. I just shot a fireball off into the distance. Um... No, from your from your last visit, nothing really appears to be different other than, you know, all the dead bodies that were hanging around are gone because you kind of took care of that. And uh, the doors have been repaired. You hear some usual commotion inside people, you know, around the place just doing their thing, drinking, feasting, etc. Bax is there being a bartender doesn't quite recognize you by first glance when you walk through the door but as you hang around he starts to pick up who, who you were and remember that you saved their asses the tiefling and the dragonborn cough cough oh those <laughs> weird people right right those weird people that killed all the fucking things outside and saved our asses yeah yeah those weird people so he welcomes you when he recognizes you I want to scan the room and see if I see any evidence of Talos. All right. Give me an investigation. Oh, wow, a six. <laughs> the number of the night. So you don't really see anything visible at the moment that can make any connection with Talos. walk up to Bax and kind of give him a nod and a smile and say, hey Bax, you ready to sell me that night? He kind of uh, finishes his current uh, duty passing a flagon down to one of the other patrons at the far end before he turns and gives you his attention. Well, I don't think I could part with this particular uh, particular amulet just for any uh, pittance. It's quite a good luck charm for me, you know. Well, the last time I was here, you weren't willing to sell it to me at all. What's a pittance? I wouldn't be able to get it, give it away for less than 100 gold. God damn, sold. <laughs> all right, well, I mean, if you really want it. I'm not one to take it from you. I've got plans for getting my own place, so I have to let go of my old life eventually, right? I have a question. I, I, I remember that somebody in the Wayside Inn had some kind of lightning bolts, either on bracers or on a necklace. Is this that necklace, or was that the bracers? It is the was bracers. bracers the first time? Was Bax the one wearing the bracers then? No. No. No, it was someone else. It was a big dude, from what I remember. Okay. I, I wanna slide back 100 and 
10 gold in exchange for the... Listen, bitch. <laughs> Wanna take this outside? <laughs> She's spending all the money. I'm the one she has her who own asked money. him for it in the first place. You can back off. A <laughs> hundred and eleven in one copper. I kind of roll my eyes and look back at Bax and hand him the gold. So he uh, takes the necklace off, places it down on the bar. Well, I guess this is about time for me to get rid of it at this point. You know, it served me well all these years, but out with the old and with the new. So he slides the amulet to you, takes your money. I put a little extra in there for you, Pax, just for being good sport. I certainly thank you, and I hope to see you one day at my own shop in Neverwinter, where I can serve you ale, and everyone will be merry. Indeed. Who was the um, bigger guy who was here the last time that we were? So, the bigger guy was actually a bigger woman, and her name was Tiga. She was the orc. Like cook or servant or whatever, wasn't she? Nope. Uh, Tiga was the. Let's see. Uh, she Only hottie dwarf? around. I remember now. There was an orc or a half orc. Yes, the half orc. The half orc's name is Kurog. Uh, Kurog. That's right. And her specialty was those spicy pork pies. And she's currently still working in the kitchen. But. Tiga is in the smithy right now, tinkering away. You can hear the uh, hammer striking metal in the distance through the wall. Oh, I will go to the smithy then. Yeah, me too. I'm going to stick around at the bar and chit chat with Bax some more and get really excited about these spicy work. Fair enough. I will stay in the Did bar. Did someone say food? And drink. Okay. Well, uh, where 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 am I going for food? Pretty much where you are right now. Staying here with me. I will stay in the bar as well with these two. All right. Excellent. So Bax serves you all a drink, and Kurag brings out pies. You all get to enjoy your own pie instead of having to share. Kura goes back into the kitchen and then realizes that they need some additional supplies and goes down into the cellar to retrieve them. And the cellar hatch is this one right here. And you sit around the bar idly chatting, enjoying your beverages and your food. As we're eating, can I ritual cast identify magic and see what kind of necklace this is? Yeah, one second. I just realized I had to fix the Lucha's uh, token. There we go. Um, yeah, so you cast uh, effect effectively, I'm assuming, detect magic. So as you cast Detect Magic, you can discern that it is in fact magical, and that it is an enchantment school. Okay. Probably should have asked him what it does. <laughs> well, so be it. All right, so back in the smithy, our occupants have entered. Tiga is currently working on some swords. One particular sword is just a usual long sword, nothing fancy, just you know, striking out the shape still, forming it. Any uh any inventory of interest to adventurers like ourselves? Um she kind of stops for a moment, comes over and basically asks if she can assist you anything you might be looking for she's got some arrows and bolts swords axes some uh, armor some mail bracers 
shields, helmets, any of the type that you might expect. Oh, most of them you can see look to be made out of iron, some bronze items, and most of it is in decent shape. How much for a shield? What was that? For a shield, how much would it be? Uh, for a shield? Let me see. And go. So for one of these, like, they're not even really tower shields, but I guess I would call them like a, a little larger than a buckler. Um, a hoplon shield, I guess is fine. Yeah, it would be about, probably about 35 gold pieces. Yeah, I'll buy one. I need a shield. Okay. Are any of these enchanted? None of them are enchanted. Is she still wearing the bracers with the lightning bolts on them? Yes, she is. You worship Talos? I wasn't going to go there. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I've just had these bracers that I got from my father when I was younger. I've had them ever since. Can I see them? Sure. She pulls pulls one of them off for you, hands it over. Pulls the other one off and holds it for you to take whenever you're ready for it. I put them on just to see if anything happened. Nothing happens to you. No weird feelings, no nothing. No weird feelings. Okay. I kind of etch the symbol in their make. I, I take it they're well crap. Or are they just regular gauntlets with little fucking lightning bolts on? They are copper gauntlets or bronze gauntlets, I think they were, with lightning okay. bolts on them. Uh, after putting them on and uh, seeing them, he asks if uh, she can forge a pair. Just like sure, yeah, I could probably for yeah, I could probably forge a pair of these. Uh, might take me a few days though. Mm, I don't have a few days. Well, I've mind. I've got a backlog currently of uh, these weapons to finish, and then I could probably make them. Unless you want to pay extra, I could rush them ahead. How much is extra, and how much for the total? Well, extra would probably be another 50 gold. To make them, I would probably charge you about 50 itself. So, about 100 gold total. Mm, I'll pass. Thank you, though. Alright. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You feel free to go back to working. I apologize for disrupting. I know you're busy. All right, very well. Tika goes back to uh, pounding on that steel, as it were. Ah. I go back to the bar and uh, ask Bax if he knows anything about Tika. Uh, what do you mean? As far as I know anything about her, I mean she's. She's been here. She's worked here at the uh, at the inn ever since I've been around as well. You never knew her father then. Oh no, I did not know her father personally. No. How how many people are in the bar area besides Bax and our and our group? Uh, yeah, probably about five patrons. The owner and proprietor, Marticia, is still glooming in the corner, looking at the books and the ledgers and sipping idly at an ale. Bax, Kura, Tika's in the smithy, and that's about it. I saw a storm, I guess, uh, a day or two ago brewing over here. What happened to that? You guys get blown down any? Oh, it was quite a show, I have to agree, yeah. Definitely quite a show. The uh, few of the shutters ripped off on the uh, inn. Tiga helped do some mending, and there's a couple spots of the walls that started to give. 
no permanent damage. No permanent damage, thankfully. You know which direction the storm rolled in from? Uh, probably came in. My guess would be the west, but I wasn't really looking outside when it hit, so it was hard to tell. Alright. Well, well, thanks. Yep, sure thing. There, wasn't there a back entrance to the basement? Behind the smithy? Uh, no, that, that out here is the wood pile. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a wood pile. Say, I don't think we ever explored the back of the inn anyway. Right, but like, so like, this is the, this is the kitchen. There's a side door that leads out for access to get to, you know, loading and unloading. This is the cellar. Uh, then there's the room out in the common area. It's way to the second floor. There's a small stage where they can sometimes have a bard, but there's not one here currently. Then you've got the stables. I, I just vaguely remember some weirdness in the cellar when we came through here the first time, and I'm curious if it's still That there. was the other end. Oh, was it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, wasn't that the, like, chest in or whatever? Yeah, that was the one with the dead body. We did not go in the cellar for this inn. And given that it's a bustling inn, I'm pretty sure crowding into their cellar right now would probably not be very welcome. So after a uh, fair amount of time has gone past, Bax kind of looks back in the kitchen and doesn't see Kurag anywhere, so he decides to go look for her. He says, yeah, hold on a moment. I'm going to go look in the cellar and see what's keeping Kurag. So he heads down to the I give, cellar. I give my group an eye, like, are we going to do this again? <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. I want I'm drunk. To, I want to kind of tug on Talia's sleeve and just uh, very quietly whisper. Do, do I notice anything from my bow? Nope. Oh, I guess it didn't come through, sorry. I, I just kind of tug on your sleeve and just whisper, spider. Oh, got it. Um, in that case, I call forth my spider, like, underneath the table. Release mm -hmm. it to go scurry and follow them down into the cellar. Staying, like, clearly out of sight of them. Okay. And more importantly, out of reach. <laughs> just the spider. Spider! I, I don't want backs going, hmm, damn best. No, please, please, no. I don't want to spend the ingredients and another hour of my time getting another <laughs> spider. <laughs> so, while you're hanging around, casually waiting and feasting, your spider is creeping along into the cellar to give you a little insight on what's going on. It makes its way into the cellar and kind of crawls off into the corner and perches up on the wall over here watching. In the cellar, you basically see the kegs along the walls and a small larder against the north wall as well where there's supplies and things stashed. Currently, Kurag has one of the faces of, the, of one of the kegs open. Like it's a storage container that doesn't have ale inside of it. And Bax is standing behind her, having a hushed conversation. Okay. I cast my senses into the spider. What do I hear them saying? I I'm don't think... Yep, no, that's fine. I don't think that they're going to get it. I don't know what we're going to need to do next, but... Uh, we've definitely lost it. I don't know if we're going to get it back. We may have to send for aid and, and maybe see if we can get the map, uh, the map deciphered from someone else. Kurag kind of pops back out from the barrel, holding a folded map in her hand. 
I don't think that anyone's going to be able to decipher this. I just would rather ship it back where it came from and be done with it. And Bax kind of decides that we can't just do that. We've got to, we've got to figure something out. So he he accepts the map from Kurag and kind of places it in his shirt, and then heads back upstairs while Kurag is re re ha let's say reconcealing the fake front of the uh, the ale keg. And then Kurag also leaves and heads up the stairs, carrying some supplies from the larder. How close to closing time is it? Oh, it's nighttime now, but this particular inn you know, wouldn't really shut down until a little past midnight, probably. Closing time, you say? Is it time to uh, turn all of the lights on over every boy and every girl? Gather all your jackets and head out to the exits. Hope you have found a friend. No, sorry. I, I don't know that that's the case, no. <laughs> I despise that song. What? <laughs> oh. Sidebar, I apologize. They ran that song for 24 hours straight on one of the local radio stations before it switched oh, for no. me. Somebody needs Alrighty then. So recall spider. Okay. You get your spider back. Kurag's in the kitchen continuing to make goodies. And Bax is back behind the bar tending to the rest of his patrons. Um <clears throat> who do from as I say to Bax. You you cut out a little bit there. Who do I need to rent a room from? Oh, Marticia will hook you up, uh, I'm sure. Uh, it's probably only like a gold piece for the night at most. Got some pretty pretty nice rooms upstairs. Oh, good. Um, in that case, I go over to the innkeep and rent a room. All right. And as I do, I say to my party, I'm going up to my room. <clears throat> uh, if you guys don't want to spend any money... On a room, you should join me. <clears throat> I kind of give her a look and uh, give a nod to Bax and say, Well, I better go treat that cough, I guess. And I just yes, follow. It, it's follow. quite deadly. Fair enough. How to do cleric things, I guess. I'd like the room adjacent to his, please. All right, so Marticia hooks you up with a room. Couple of gold. Yeah, one gold. As he'll sleep in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> out there shaking his can <laughs> <laughs> all right as you will sleep in the wagon <laughs> uh, Dave comes over tries to eat the can kill Dave to keep that fucking goat under wraps <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to Marticia for a moment all while right. people are heading up and getting their room situated <clears throat> And I will sit down on the opposite end of the table from her, wherever she is, and I will just ask her. So, we heard the storm blew in. We saw it all the way from Leyland before we came back up here. Anything weird happen with it? Well, short of it costing me some money damage and a pain and eh, not too much else really happened from it I don't think just 
just a really bad storm. Yeah, it came up out of nowhere. All the locals that were in the area coming this way had uh, sought some shelter here because it brewed up so quickly. So they all came in and we hunkered down and served everyone as best we could and kept business going. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone from the locals not here by chance? We dealt with some people of Talos, so we're concerned that it might be part of what they're doing. Hmm. Well, I mean, everybody appeared to be here as best I could tell. Well, at least all of my staff were here. That's good. At least keeping an eye on them and things. Uh, well, that's really all I got, so thank you. And I'll be taking a room as well, and I pay her gold. All right, fair enough. Enjoy your evening. I will try. So I head upstairs as well, so that I can just see what's going to be going on. Alright, so everyone with the exception of Azzy, who's apparently sleeping in the wagon, is now upstairs. your little friend see it's all yeah um so i don't think our friend max and her dog are being entirely upright about their business um <clears throat> they keep talking about recovering some things and based on the way they were talking i think they were talking about the map and tools a uh, quick question juni or actually, I should ask, Knight. As Knockers is heading upstairs, I imagine Azzy is still sitting at the bar. He hasn't gone out to the wagon or anything. Correct. Okay. With that being the case, then, while Talia is kind of talking to this, I will point in the direction that I assume the bar is and cast message. And as long as the wood is not three feet thick... I should be able to whisper to Azzy, and only he can hear it, and he can respond back to me. Yep, it's not three feet thick, so... Yep, so I'll just keep him appraised of what's going on. <clears throat> so, they have the map. Bax currently has it and they don't know how to decipher it. Yeah, so I'm pretty positive that the crystals we have are what we need to decipher the map, but they have the map. And they want the crystals, or the lenses, or whatever. It's going to ask. Guessing that they were probably in contact with, uh, what was that lady's name that was over at the coster? Yeah. Feline? Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it seems like Bax is open to getting outside help. Why don't we just ask him if he has any work that we can be paid for in the time that we spend here before we head back up to Neverwinter? It's not like we're untrustworthy characters. They've seen us save their. Yeah, he knows true. what we're capable of. So it's entirely possible that he will pay us to do something we want to do. Or maybe I could try and sneak down into the basement and get it myself. It's on Vax, from what Talia said. Uh, yes, it's either in there, but... Oh, 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 there was, there was a barrel that Kurog was digging through. But it wasn't a normal cask full of liquor um there's like a hidden like way to open it and it wasn't filled with alcohol so maybe we should i couldn't quite get a good view and see if it was actually in there i did hear them talking about it though 
<laughs> so, the actual question then becomes, do they know enough of what the map actually is to be part of the problem, or are they just the middleman in this case? That is a good question. Because, as I'm kind of pointing down so that I whisper back to Azzy and stuff like this, and then I say, I'm all fine for causing a ruckus in this if they are the ones to blame and they're breaking the law in this case, but we don't necessarily need to crack skulls just yet. I really don't want to have to pay for fees for broken tables and crap, unless we have to. Ash may be right in this scenario. It might be better to just offer assistance. True. I mean, if worse comes to worst, I can still use certain spells to <clears throat> people to get in there. As I, I gun him. <laughs> Pretty sure you're stealthier than me. Maybe. What's your modifier? Plus eight. You're stealthier than me. All that text, baby. <laughs> so, I'm talking, I'm talking with Azzy. We could, he could be the one to present the, he could be the one to pose the question to Vax, considering he's downstairs. And I'm still talking with him. Um, he is the one possibly most likely to be able to get Vax aside from Ash to open up about it, considering they were both sailors at one point, I think. And as he is presenting him with money for his beer. On top of that, um, it'd just be really easy to kind of say, hey, have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, you worked with uh, maps and the whatnot. You were a sailor. You you know how this works. Uh, I can't figure this out. I've got this map and this glass lens that is supposedly supposed to read it, but nothing happens. Yeah, Starting to suspect. What if they yeah. try to steal it from us? I then message. it's two against, what, five? How many are we now? I mean, really, I'm not worried about them trying to steal anything from us. Uh, we have ample means to catch up to them should they run. Uh, we've got ample means to overpower them should they try. Uh, and as far as we know, they're alone here if they are worshippers of Talos. There's, at a max, what, four of them? Bax, the Tavern Keep, uh, the Cook, and the Smith, right? That's four? Yeah, that's what I'm counting as well. Yeah. So, basically what Azzy is proposing, as I'm kind of <laughs> relaying is fun, um, basically what Azzy is proposing is he'd be the one to talk, and he does present a good point that we're going to be able to easily overpower them and that we don't necessarily... This is a good way to test to see what's going on and if they're willing to talk about it. And it's a good white lie to them as well. It's a... Uh... It's also worth noting uh, that I'm down here, that Bax is, uh, is pretty hardy. Um, he's, he knows how to hold his own. He's almost, I would say that he's perhaps a little bit beyond my level when it comes to experience. So uh, I don't want to fight him if I don't have to. He hasn't done anything to wrong us. And this could very well just be taken out of context. He has a map. A map that he wants to read, and we may have the means to read it. Blah, 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 blah. And I agree with Ozzy. I don't believe that Vax has done anything to deem himself untrustworthy. That might be so, but what if they're trying to do something nasty with the map? He did used to be a pirate, after all. Are you trying I mean, to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got nothing against pirates, but like, this is Talos we're talking about here. Talos to is fair. exactly a god you pray to. He's one you placate. 
let's just give the benefit of the doubt and see what happens. If Ozzy, if Ozzy's confident in doing it, and it sounds like Ash is in agreement as well, let's give it a chance, see what happens. Besides, it's not like we're too far away. And if anything really happens, I could just light this place on fire. Well, no. Or we don't want to I could just stealth in there and get it, or cast invisibility on the gun. Cheeky. But you so said it was it. on somebody's person. It was on. It's on back specifically. At right. The moment. Oh, true. Sight of hand might work. After Let's all, look. I can do this. Cast mage hand. Turn it invisible. <laughs> Dismiss it. <laughs> Well, if I we do that, if we, if we sneak and we get caught, then we're deeming ourselves untrustworthy. Yeah, let's just give Azzy, let's just see how Azzy does and let him try. Let's okay, so what's that. our plan B if this goes to shit? Let's at least have If it goes to shit, the most likely scenario is that Fax has no idea any place dumb. And then you get to do your sneaky sneak thing. Okay, let's plan C. Plan C plan is C. that we station people at exits, so that way if somebody tries to bowl for it, you know, they're gonna get caught. And if I need help, you're at the exits. All you gotta do is... Okay, all fair points. Just saying, uh, a good thing. I mean... <clears throat> A good entrepreneur has several plans in place. Yeah, entrepreneur. Anyways, continue. I think we're all well aware of what you might have used to do, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, sure! <laughs> Ash just kind of shrugs and grins from ear to ear and says, Well, if everything really does go to shit and go south, there's always Operation... <laughs> I will roast them. It, I will roast the grinded meat as well if that comes to pass. <laughs> you people are oh, fucking yes. disgusting. <laughs> Ooh, Bex burgers. <laughs> Y'all are fucked up. With that, Ash just gets up and kind of skips out of the room and goes back downstairs. <laughs> Y'all are some of the fuck else. Uh, as you will go ahead and wave Bex down. All right. Yeah, what can I do for you? Brother, you used to sail, right? That I did. Got something of a conundrum here. Uh, so, you've worked with the with the sail maps and uh, the charts. Mm hmm mm hmm Right. So, I have a map here. And I'm supposed to be able to read it with some kind of scrying glass. Uh, we, were, we were over in... Uh, Fandalin? Fandalin? Yep. And uh, came across some, uh, some some scrying glass and a couple maps. <sighs> and I'm just trying to figure out how to get it to work, man. I, you got any experience with this? Huh. Well, um, not particularly, but I suppose I can give it a look. Night, or uh, night. <laughs> As he uh, kind of surreptitiously uh, holds out the scrying glass and the map uh, indicating um, the wayside in. Okay. He looks at the map and kind of sees the lay of the land. He's like, okay, all right, so that's a local area. And then he sees the uh, lens and the, yeah, I'm assuming you brought out the whole apparatus with it as well? Yeah. Okay. So he looks at the lens and you can tell as he looks at it that it's not his first time actually holding it, but you can see that he's making it look that way as he kind of turns it over in his hands. And so he starts looking at the map with it, and he can see that, yes, there is, in fact, a marking that is around the wayside inn. It's 
Huh. Keeping an eye on him while he's doing this, make sure he's not doing any kind of weird sleight of hand bullshit. So he kind of astonishingly takes a back and looks at you and says, Well, this is a cool trick. He said, How how do they make this how do they make this do that on the map? Hmm. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you'd be able to tell me. Uh do you have any other maps we could try? Uh, any other maps? Hmm. Well, maybe. We might have one or two in the cellar we could dig out. Well, why don't you bring them up? Oh, it'd be easier if you came down to the cellar and took a look for yourself. Oh, Bax. Uh, I'll do that. Let me see that lens back. He hands you back the the lens apparatus, kind of apprehensively. Uh, I take it. I inspect it, make sure that everything's back to where it needs to be. That he didn't, you know, slate of hand the actual lenses out and swap them out or anything. He did not? Hey. Uh, I put it back in my pack. And, uh, is that whisper thing, or that message, still... So I have to cast it, and it's 120 feet, and it's how thick is the stone between me? Well, the thickness of the stone between you and him is probably enough that the message would still get through. Okay. It would be one foot of stone, so I can point, uh, as I come in from the outside, just making sure that nothing's really kind of out of place. I'll point through, and I'll cast a spell, and I'll ask him how things are going. So how are things going? I need everybody to gather around the cellar now. Okay. So... Uh, I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes, or next couple of seconds, just pointing roughly where I remember them being, since I know them well enough. I can kind of target them beyond a barrier. And... Um, I will message each of them to kind of gather around the cellar just to be safe, because Azzy's got a plan in motion. All right, fair enough. With that, I suppose I follow back. All right. So Bax goes down to the cellar, and you follow him down. I guess I can't get inside the cellar. <laughs> nope, hold on. There you go, it's open. So Bax, uh, hold on, I have to change. So Bax makes his way into the cell and he goes up to the little larder table and he starts digging around. It's like, I know there were a couple of maps in here that have been around for ages. So we can uh, can try to see if there's anything any more interesting you can see. If you want to give me a hand, maybe on that side over there, and he kind of points over to the uh, you know to the right hand side of the larder area. He's like, maybe try looking there for me. I'll try looking over here. And he moves to the left side and starts digging through some of the piled goods that are standing on top of the tabling and the shelving. Are we alone? Yes. Without a doubt. Yep. It is Bax in the basement. No. That you are that you are able to discern. Alright, I continue with my ruse then. Yeah, I'll help him out. So after some rifling, digging around for things, he pulls out three maps. Uh, I take each one of them in turn and 
look at them through the glass. Alright, so he unfolds the first map and lays it down. He unfolds the second map and lays it on top of it. And he unfolds the third map and lays it on top of that one. And then as you start looking through them, you kind of take a quick glance one by one. So if you want to just do an investigation roll for the first map for me. You don't yeah. see... Yeah, you don't see any differences on the map, despite the coloration change from the lens. There's no markings or anything that's, you know, circled or highlighted or marked in any specific way like the other one had been. So you push that to the side, and you look at the second map. And go ahead and roll again for me. And again, you don't see anything of interest on this map. It's just another map of the coastline potentially where there had been some trade routes or some shipping and things like that so nothing of interest there again kind of put that off to the side and then you start to look at the third map go ahead and uh go ahead and look at that one are you fucking kidding me so you look at the third map and despite the fact that maybe your vision is a little hazy you can see that there are markings on this map. Thanks, John. Buy it from him. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, there are. Uh, look here. Uh, where are the markings? Specifically, uh, what what is this a map of? Having garnered my interest, I will divult, divert, <laughs> maximum focus. <laughs> maximum focus? Okay. Um, let me see. Go ahead and give me a history Stop check, I Stop making me roll. <laughs> God damn it. Do a history check. Go oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> All right. So, looking at this map more closely now that you've discerned there's things there you can make out that the map is in fact an old map of the current region there are some features that are highlighted and circled on this map in various locations that you don't see on any current or existing map things that could be like caves or inlets or maybe little groves that are hidden somewhere but on standard maps these days, those features are not present. Hmm. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not sure this map. What uh? What kind of interesting things have you find on it? Well, it's dated. Uh, looks like there are some uh, interesting landmarks. Oh. Uh, caves for the explorer and us. You know, I am an adventurer, and uh, exploring is my gig really looking forward to going delving interesting it, do, you, do you mind if i see i didn't get to see anything with it before just that that one circle that was on that other one and it wasn't all that interesting but it's very curious how this how these things work sure go for it so you hand him the apparatus and he kind of peers through it he's kind of astonished when he looks at the map and sees the markings it's like oh how cool is that Certainly didn't get to see any of that in my pirating days. Uh, I've had I've dealt with my fair share of invisible links, if you will, but most of those came up with blood. I've never dealt too much with magic. Most of the ma most of the magic users that uh, we dealt with on our ships, we had a tendency to cast oversight. Is uh, it didn't really uh, befit us very well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That being said, though, um, <laughs> well, it's it's almost like a new field of study. It's amazing. Very interesting. Yes, I agree. It's quite, quite quite interesting indeed. So, how much do you want for the map? Oh, let's see. He thinks for a minute. Well, it's just been down here kind of collecting dirt. Uh, he kind of gives you a wry smile for a second. How about you pay your life? And at that moment... Go ahead and roll some initiative for me. Taxi dick. That answers that question, I guess. Oh, 
the thing is, we don't know about it yet, so... On the, I was on the top of the stairs into the cellar. I was asking him if I need a rope to get closer. Oh, Junie, can you... Sorry, I rolled a 25. Can you put that on my, my token? I forgot to click on myself. Okay, what alone. the fuck, guys? I leave for two minutes sling initiative. Yeah, it turns out the price for the map that had good stuff on it was his life. I... You know Max what? I, a dick. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna say I t but there, I told you so. There was a reason I was on the stairs and not waiting Shit. up the top like you guys are good. Shit, I'm st How do I get down? Oh yeah, your mic's fucked up. Oh, because I've got multiple internet things. Probably. The it entrance to the cellar is inside the kitchen, know. guys. Well, the problem more to... is, is if Junie says you can get in there without Kugar or um, Kurak noticing, because that's a big thing, because she's probably still in there. Right, it's it's still a populated inn, so your ability to try to just sneak into the cellar isn't just like, oh, I'm just going to tiptoe through the kitchen by myself and get in the cellar. Right, which is why I said to be near it, because Kurag is probably still in the kitchen, and until one of us goes, let, particularly probably me or Ash or Talia or you, and if you guys have message, we won't know if Azzy is in trouble or not yet because I don't know how well sound's going to carry through this place. Okay. Um, Can y'all hear me better now? Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, if we see you heading towards the kitchen, we're going to be going. You know what I mean? Like, we right. don't, we don't no. necessarily have to yell, Oh my god, you know, that's... Right, right, no, no. That is perfectly fine. It's more a matter of going first and actually realizing as he's in trouble. That's the thing. Well, I promise you that as he's not in trouble. Jenny, I need <laughs> you to add me, please. I did. I don't... Myself. You don't see. Uh -oh. Sweet. Is I it the token on the wrong board? Yeah, it's the token on the wrong board. And I'm upstairs. You know, you're in like the bedroom area, aren't you? Yeah, I was totally just like, oh, I'll just move myself down whenever I get back if we're, you know, we're in combat. <sighs> okay. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, Alright, so everybody is now in their positions. Um, because you're currently waiting on guard, let's call it. You're not yet in the middle of anything, but you have your initiative rolls slotted out. So in the basement. Bax draws his spear from behind the larder and faces off with Azzy. But Azzy, you get first move because you were kind of on guard already for his advance to happen. Thank you. Uh, if I'm counting it out right, it looks like it's 60 feet to be outside of the basement. Is that correct? Uh, hold on, let me see if I And that would be that would put me actually on the, the on square. the landing yeah yeah okay um i will use my dash action well I, I will use my full movement and my bonus action to dash uh to the and on the way be sla slamming my sword the flat of my sword against my shield so that everybody in here will okay so um, you so before you actually get out of the cellar you realize that the latch as you're trying to push up on the cellar door is bound in such a way that it will not budge 
and you hear the cackling from backs, back by the larder, as you're now standing under the door, trying to force it open. Thought you would get away so easily, did you? Two must enter. One must. It's not a fight that I'll win. So your your position, I believe, is now there. Yeah. Okay. Is that the uh, end of your turn? What is readying in action? Is that uh, I don't I don't assume that I can do that after using a, a full action and a bonus action to get work. You would have to use your action and your move in order. Right. It'd be yeah. Basically, like holding the action for a reaction to use at a later time. Okay. Uh, well then, draw my sword and. Uh, I hit the uh, <laughs> the top of my at the top of my head. I guess the, the the door as hard as I can with my shield. Try to make as much noise as possible. Also, uh, does it put me within range of a message? I wonder. Yeah, you're within range. I got 120 feet to work with. Uh, well, then I will. If uh, DM will allow it, I will speak words to allow Noctris to know where I'm at and what it, what has actually transpired. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll just pretty much say I need help and I need people down here. And that's all I'll do. I just made a clone of Volucha. Awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah, twice the range of power. Doo doo doo. I'd be careful on that wish. More pew pew. Does that mean we have two legs? Two left legs? Mmm, <laughs> cobalt. I guess somebody needs a saving. Well, we're waiting oh. for Junie. Yep. Yeah, I'm just, too. I'm just getting. No, I'm getting things prepped on the uh, GM layer so I can just present them where they're supposed to be now. Yep. Yeah, because we've got a smith, a bookkeeper, and a cook who are still unaccounted for. And possibly several civilians. Mm -hmm. yep. There were at least five who could have been Talos worshippers. This is obviously a... That's okay. Ash has got her meat grinder. We're good. I don't want right. to be meat grinded. <laughs> well, sometimes you don't get a juice. It's fine. You've got a lot of armor. You might survive there and there. The room's only 30 feet wide. You get a friend out there, I'll tell ya. It's about to be a really long fight. <laughs> All I saw is a bunch of markers go poof on my map. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean all enemies. Come on, man. <laughs> we'll see what happens. This is John we're talking about. Okay, so... They're all moving sad guys, it'll be fun. Figuring out some commotion happening from the cellar. Kurag, basically from the kitchen, yells out some words in a awkwardly ancient tongue. And uh, begins to sprint and leave from the kitchen out the back door. While many of the patrons' demeanors 
suddenly shift and they all arise showing their true colors as right. cults as cultists and fanatics of Talos. So let me add them all to the encounter here. I enjoy the room that Talia is in is only accessible from the the barn area. Mm-hmm. I know it's this one. Last but not least. All right. Now that Azzy and Bax had their little quick round between them and the jig is up, I'll go ahead and resort the uh, maneuvers here and then put Azzy and Bax at the bottom to recycle back through. He's going to be fast. <laughs> All right. Ash, you get to lead us off. To is there a lock on the kitchen door or only the cell? As far as you can tell from where you're at, you have access to get into the kitchen because the little whatever you want to call that little doorway, closet way kind of thing that leads through is just an opening. There's no actual door there. Um, but the cellar door, the little trap door is still shut. Yeah, and you don't know if it's locked or open or not locked or anything. Okay. Can I bolt past uh faster and head to the cellar door here and check and Sure. So you run past into the kitchen. And you get to the cellar door. And you attempt to see if you can open it. It does not budge. How long, um, how long does your ritual cast for Detect Magic last? I want to say it's an hour. Let me check. Oh, up to 10 minutes. Okay. Then that's not active anymore. Okay. Um. Ah, oh, jeez. Can I 
take a few steps back from it? Or does that mm -hmm. take another, like, act? No, no, you can do that. You basically just try to see if you can pull the door open, the cellar door open while you're in that position. It's only yeah. about 20 feet distance, so. Yeah, yeah. and then I want to cast Frostbite at it. At the door? The cellar door? To try to break the cellar door. Sure. Is it made of just, like, wood? Does it appear to be made of... Yep. Wait, if that's... No, no, I'm going to go range first. Okay, yep, so I'm going to cast from. Okay. All right, it does, in fact, hit the door because the door doesn't really have a constitution save. And the, uh, the cold, biting damage of the projectile smashes upon it, but it looks like nothing has happened to the door. And that it is potentially warded. Okay. Um, I guess that's it then for me for now. I'll just stay here. Okay. And as, I'll, I'll yell out to Caster. Uh, I need you in here. And that's it for me. Alrighty. Go, Neil. How tall is the ceiling in this room? <laughs> of course, the it's, flying ranger says that. Probably about ten foot. It's not like a very, it's not a very lofty ceilinged area. It's taller than your standard like home, but uh, probably ten foot at best. Still within swing range. Yeah, yeah. It's still be able to probably nick you. Yeah, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up on, hang up on the stage. And then I'm going to use a bonus action to put Hunter's Mark on this guy on the far end. Fair enough. The, well, the, this guy on the far end, you said you're talking about Marticia? Although, okay, that guy right there, okay. Whatever that guy is. And and then I'm going to start lighting him up with uh, my longbow. Okay. Hit for 21, attack for 21, hit for 24 point. Yep, that is a hit. And I will rinse and repeat. Thirteen. That is a miss. Okay. And that will be my turn. Alrighty. Time for the cult of personality. All right. So this this uh, first fanatic right here, because you ran away to the stage, is going to chase you up. And they are going to attempt to stab you twice with their dagger. The first stab for a 19 is a hit for six piercing damage.
and the second hit is a crit for seven. John got the rolls tonight, Jesus. No kidding. <laughs> I did get two green rolls on that, so that was pretty good. Yeah, also look at your fucking initiative rolls. Fuck you, man. <laughs> hey, you don't hate it. You know, don't hate. I fucking hate it. <laughs> All right, so that cultist turn is over. The next cultist that you're shooting at is going to come after Caster, blocking the doorway a little bit. And he is going to cast Inflict Wounds. All right, so it makes a melee spell attack. So let's roll this melee spell attack here. All right, he got a 13, which I don't think is enough to hit you. No. So he does not, in fact, inflict any wounds upon you at this time. And that will be his turn. And then this cultist right here next to Nocris isn't going to have to go far. He's going to attempt to uh, give you a little stab himself of twice with his dagger. Okay. First roll is a miss. Second roll is a hit. Okay. For six piercing. Next fanatic. Uh, he is going to kind of move toward the middle of the room a little bit. And he will cast. Hmm. He's going to cast Hold Person on Caster. Or at least attempt to cast Hold Person on Caster. Is that a wisdom save? I don't think so. It is, yes. You have to pass a wisdom saving throw. Against 14. Alright, nope. so, so you did not pass. So basically you are currently paralyzed for the duration... Uh, at the end of each turn, you get to basically make another wisdom save to see if you break free. And the duration of the spell is one action, or I'm sorry, um, one minute, which would be equivalent of like six rounds. Assuming, assuming that this particular fanatic's concentration is not broken, or that you don't. Okay, break I was free. just gonna ask that. All right, put a little symbol on him. So, all right, that's the end of his turn. And the next fanatic is going to try to come behind Nocris and give him a little poke with a dagger again. First one is a hit for five piercing. Second one is a big miss. Or do you roll the six? Nocris, it is your turn to return fire. All right. I will attack this one. Okay. Hit. It does. All right. In that case, then I am going to burn a third level spell slot to Divine Smite. So that will be an additional. Should 
original 48. Sorry, I'm just reading something really quickly. Mm -hmm, no problem. because I imagine he's still standing, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I am going to... Now, you can determine what this is, but I kind of want to do two things. Are there holes in the floor that I can see down into the basement with? No. Okay. That answers that question, so I'm not going to do that. I will then burn to... Sorcery points to quicken a spell, and I will cast or actually, no, I won't burn two sorcery points. That'll be it for my turn. All right. The end of your turn, and uh, the Smith Tiga, right up here, coming in from the uh, the cold, as it were, in the stable yard, going to make their way around the corner, having heard the enchanting alarm that rang out throughout the inn, and survey the uh, the scene here. going to basically uh, see the things in this first floor area looks pretty well covered and is going to make their way up the stairs to the landing. And that will be the end of their turn. Caster, it is your turn. I end my turn because I'm paralyzed. Right. So uh, you can give me a wisdom save to see if you break free. I try to beat 14. There you go. You are now free. But it is the end of your turn. So it is now Marticia's turn. She's going to move over to you. And she's going to attempt to hit you with her scimitar for a slash. From across the bar? Yeah, why not? It's a sword. Plus, that's the side that has a little, like, opening where you can walk in and out from the behind the bar. But, uh, it's alright. They, she misses wildly and, uh, hits the wall. And that's the end of her turn. Up on the second floor, there is an individual that you did not yet meet named Cray. And they, having surveyed the area already on this top floor, tell Tiga that there's nothing up here. Go back down on the first floor. And proceeds to go down to the first floor around. From this vantage, Cray will cast Firebolt at Gunhild. And a 12 does not hit. But Don't the, piss me off, boy. But the stage has seen, has seen better days. 
And that's the end of uh, Cray's turn. Talia, it is around to you. Finally, after 10,000 years. Okay. Would you like to join us? I'm going to try, because um, like the only way out is through the barn. It, it, it might take a little bit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to run around to the front door. Uh, no, once is, so the way that those doors are shut up is you see when you come down the stairwell from the right hand side, which is the second floor to the first oh, floor, yeah, is yeah, that okay, back door. Yep. Gotcha. Okay, in that case, um, how thick are the floors up here? I mean, standard thickness that you would have floor beams be. I don't. Act is despite my career. Alright, I would say with the subfloor and the flooring on top of it, I'd say it's probably about half an inch to an inch thick. Maybe a little more, it depends if they Three insulated it. So, probably not insulated given that this is fantasy world. Right. Um, so, it's probably just some really thick wood beams that creak when you walk around. Right, it's just like planking. Hmm. Trying to determine how easy it would be to just go through the floor. Clearly, everybody here wants to murder us, and I'm about to own a tavern. I mean, what? Well, so. do you want to own a tavern with a hole in the ceiling, or...? <laughs> That's fixable. <laughs> exactly. That's fixable. It's you being going dead to be my so tavern, much. so... <laughs> There's about to be a lot of dragonborn blood all over your basement. Just saying. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, it can be cleaned no, up with magic. I'm the only dragonborn here. Oh. Bax dragonborn. I thought Bax. No, he's not. <laughs> Bax and I are from the same country. Bax is a Luskin. I don't know what a Luskin is. Definitely not all dragonborn. Okay. No. So. I don't have options to push me through the floor. No crazy magics yet, guys. I'm sorry. Um. So, step one, I hit myself with mage armor. My AC is 15 now. Okay. <laughs> um, step two, that looks like 5, 10, 15. I can get to... Actually, how, how tall are the stairs at the top of the stairs? Like... Here. Uh, from the outside down to the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, five, ten, fifteen. Probably about ten feet tall. Cool. I'll just jump it. Um, I go. <laughs> I could do the actual math, but it's gonna be if it's the equivalent of like fifteen foot on the hypotenuse. It's what? Like it would be whatever the hell you do for the whatever hell you do for the math to find the height. Let's, let's not do trigonometry. <laughs> right. I'll just call it ten feet. So that's what, like 1d6 damage per 10 feet or something like that? Yeah, see, yeah, you you take a little hit for jumping it. Okay, so then I jump down. And that is... E there. Um, so can you place me onto the other one? Because I want to start moving. to the other back. one. Yeah, you should be able to move through, but yeah, it's fine. Okay. And then... And that's where I'll end my turn after dashing. Alright. Next person, please. Dashing through the snow. Alright, back into the rubble pit of the cellar. Where WrestleMania 27 is happening. Azzy, it's your turn. Post up right here and uh, ready my shield and sword. Excellent. Uh, can I like hold my attack for when he arrives or? Yep. Great. Yeah, but if you back. can, yeah, you can choose to if if you want to basically make it a reactive attack. It basically mean you get an additional like reaction from that kind of situation, so you can react to his attack when he approaches, or you can simply be ready so you can take a strike when he gets within melee range, and then he has his attack anyways. It's all basically going to be the same in the end because I don't think he's going to kill you or you're going to kill him in one hit. 
But uh, it's going to be who would basically hit first. Okay. So, fair enough. All right. So you're primed and ready. Bax gives a sauntering chuckle as he comes to approaches towards you. And he'll go ahead and give you a, a little poke. Try to poke you with his spear. Uh, 22 hits. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Is, is he? Is it just that one attack? Yes. Yeah, I'm rolling um. damage now. And you take 11. Is that minus the three? No, that's full. So if you want to do the minus three, then it's eight. And it's piercing. The spear isn't magical, is it? It is It is not magical. Uh, let's see. So in reference to WrestleMania 27, which of the uh, ten fights would like to be presented here? <laughs> Perhaps... Um, the Miz and John Cena for the final fight of the uh, evening then. or maybe even The Undertaker and Triple H I mean that could be more of the scenario I think you know Bax has probably got more of an Undertaker tone and kind of personality going on well in that case I got some bad news for Azzy <laughs> uh, who won that uh, can I go ahead and use my saved action yep. that word yeah uh, so how does this work because if i'm reacting reaction attacks don't include my double hit or my fighter class features right whatever. it's because of the way you prepare and save the action for this it's a f normal full attack action because you've per you specifically prepared it for this if it was just a standard you get a reaction from whatever happened that would be different So six and twelve. So the six misses, and the twelve misses. God damn! It's gonna be that kind of night, guys. You're fighting another you. <laughs> Not really. I'm fighting John, who's got <laughs> fucking major roll on me. I'm fucking. I'm in terms of armor. Oh no, he is definitely nowhere near as armored as I am. Uh, I actually uh, sized him up, so to speak, uh, uh, okay. earlier. I know his health pool. <laughs> I know, I know roughly his levels. Oh, that's why I know that he's gonna beat you down here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, All right. I assume that's the end of your turn now. Yes. Okay. Ash, you may go. Okay, so... Don't hearing... roll in the middle of the tavern. <laughs> I thought about it, trust me. <laughs> uh, hearing that Caster is in a little bit of trouble over here, and knowing that I need Caster in this room, like, right now, I'm gonna first cast Flame Blade at 4th level. Okay. Trust me, trust me, if Azzy was in the basement, I would have cast Fireball a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know why it's asking me to roll for this, but I'll roll for it anyway. Um, that was my... Why are you still asking me to roll for stuff? Stop! Yeah, I don't think you have to, because those are just for the, like, attacks. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I'm going to move up here, because that's a bonus action. I'm going to move up here and smack. Okay. 
So do you want to actually use the second roll that you have there? Because basically you do a spell melee attack, which would be rolling a 1d20 plus your modifier, which is that 16 at 4th yeah. level. that's fine. Okay. Okay. So basically you hit him for 17 points of damage, which hurts him a lot. And he catches on fire and kind of stumbles over here into the ground and collapses. One down. I think I'll just stay right here. All right. That's it. Okay. Go ahead, you're up. Kid, you picked the wrong room to walk into. My bonus action, I'll be moving my hunter's mark to Mr. I'm going to shoot Firebolt, the <laughs> range. And then light him up like a Christmas tree. You shoot your Christmas tree? Fuck yeah, this is Texas, man. We shoot everything. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> not okay. Wrong. Not yeah, wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right, I so. I a 22 and hit him for 20 points. All right, so. This poor, this poor young individual, <laughs> Cray Underquill. Got in with the wrong crowd. But you basically just ended his life prematurely at the ripe age of 11. Where he was put down mercilessly by a massively flying oh, arrow. Oh, no! <laughs> you never said he was a fucking child. And he's now dead. Well, I didn't have to give you a full description about who he is because we're in the middle of combat and people are just running around. Hey, he threw a firebolt at me. Granted, he missed, but he still threw it at me. So his his character card for the NPC thing is that he is a apprentice wizard of the first level and is only able to cast three cantrips in one two spell slots of the first level. Uh, he, had a, he, he had a total of nine HP. I, I, I hit the point. So what you're saying is I walked outside of Ulda and hit like the first thing I could at level. Yeah. yeah, you beat up that like honeybee that's just like flying outside the the gates and <laughs> with like star marmots. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's the star marmots. <laughs> You sat there and drew back your bow and just like iron jaws the fuck out of him or something. You fucking lb 3 would that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I just dropped a 100 charge apex arrow on somebody. You lb 3 a ladybug. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna shoot this guy over here. I'm not. I'm not worried about this guy standing in front of me. I got backup coming. Okay. What are you talking about? I'm gonna go help the paladin. <laughs> That's fine. Don't make me have to kill this guy with a damn rapier. I am not specialized in that. Uh. Fifteen for eighteen points. And as a hit. Sweet. That'll be the end of my turn. I'll just face tank this guy. Okay. It's time for the cult of personality. So Mr. <laughs> Mr. Face Tank guy. Right in front of you. He's going to uh, see if he can give you a little poke a couple times here. Bring it on. So the first roll is a hit for 21. For five piercing. Second roll is a 16. That'll be a no. Right. All right. All 
Oh, hold on. I got distracted looking at character sheets real quick. We're good. All right, so end of that cultist turn. Next turn is now this cultist currently swarming around Nacris. He is going to attack. He's going to hit you with his dagger twice, or at least attempt. Okay. First swing is a 16, which I believe is a miss. Correct. Second swing is a 10, also a miss. Okay. He's going to go home and rethink his life. But that is the end of his turn. Next cultist, the one that was out here casting hold person. It's going to advance back over towards the door and attack caster. First strike with a dagger is a 12 that misses. Second attack with a dagger is a five, which really misses. <laughs> So he is also going to rethink his life here in the common room. And now it's the other cult surrounding Nacris. He is going to attempt to uh, cast Sacred Flame because that's something that he could probably hit with, right? Yeah. It's gonna hurt. If he wants so, to barbecue everything behind him too. Well, no, it's that's not, not how it works. Single target. It's it's radiant damage too. Yeah. So I'm gonna need to give you a deck save. Yeah. Yes, you will. Seventeen. Oh yeah, you passed. <laughs> Sweet. I'm taking damage from that. <laughs> I remember sacred flame light. That is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good. Yep. You had to make a make beat up beat a fourteen. You got a seventeen, so you're fine. You don't even take half or anything. So all right, so uh, he's gonna just be like, all right, you know, we tried a couple things and it didn't quite work out for us. So now it's not Chris's turn. Okay, I am going to yeah, I will do this. I'm going to use a bonus action and I am going to cast Divine Favor, which gives me a 1d4, extra d4 radiant damage on hit, and it's concentration for up to a minute. And then I'm going to use my action to attack with my greatsword once again on that guy, since I already hurt him once. 23 to hit. <laughs> Do you want to wage a bet whether or not you hit him? <laughs> I'm going to say I probably hit him unless he says. Yeah, he no, him. yeah, yeah, you got him. <laughs> and then I'm going to roll my extra d4 of damage. Two for nine points in total. All right, so he's feeling it, but he's still standing. Okay. He's kind of wincing at the pain, but he's still there. Which one was that? The top one or the bottom one? Bottom. bottom. Okay. And that's my action and my bonus action. I'm not going to move because if I do, I will just get more pain at the moment. That's, yep, I was going to say, it's probably a good bet to not want to move. All right, so... Pretty sure you have to start by tables. Right. For the, for the effect of this current combat, I'm not counting the tables as actual blocking but obstacles. That makes the, this so much more fun. It, it would, but like it also like really makes it terrible because like you got to weave in and out of like rows to be able to move around to get into melee range of people. I'd rather that people... Nocturus is a giant dragon, man. He could pick <laughs> up that one table and knock out both the motherfuckers standing in front of him. <laughs> Probably, Dodge. yeah. Probably. It's like, fuck it, the sword isn't working, grabs a chair. Dodge this, <laughs> bitch. That's right. WrestleMania 27. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so 
that's the end of Nox's turn. Now it is Tiga's turn, who, having been informed that there was nothing in the upper areas, is coming back downstairs. <laughs> and discovers that Talia is waiting to come around the corner. And is going to attempt to attack Talia. Let's see if we actually can hit. No, 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 lies. You're going to go attack the ranger. The ranger is much more deadly. All right, here we go. Great axe swing. Nope. No. Hits the wall. See? Told you. Burp, burp. He's trying to go for the ranger. Right. Even with both e even with both die, even with both dice that were with disadvantage, like there was no way in hell that roll was going to succeed. <laughs> All right. So Tiga's in position at least and took a swing, but you know, swing and a miss. Caster, you're up. I'm going to inflict wounds on this guy right here. Never mind. I fell super hard. I'm gonna. Well, that's, that's, uh, it's five extra movement to go through someone, right? Right, correct. And depending upon who you're trying to run through, you may have a tax opportunity. It'd be to hear through. Alright, so if you're going through Ash, the disengagement would cause uh, yep. Take this uh, uh, two, two attacks at you. You're okay with that? Yep. Okay. Alright, so Marticia will get an attack opportunity, opportunity here. Let's get over to that panel. And see if we hit uh, 22. So that one is a hit for seven slashing. And the fanatic will attempt to get a little dagger poke at you. For 19, which doesn't connect. Yay. And now I'm my Did our cleric become a tank? I got a yeah. shield and now my AC is 20. Oh. Yeah. Uh, as Horrible. Caster runs by me, I'm just gonna yell, The door is magic. We need to. I'll cry. Yay. Okay. Yeah, Arvel's always had really high AC on Caster. I am my turn. He's basically our ambulance that we have to push everywhere and make sure it doesn't <laughs> spring a leak. Just, just keep wheeling him around. Yeah. All right. So Caster's turn is done. Marticia, having had her target escape, will now move to the door and will attempt to pass through Ash forcibly with a sword. Wait, don't I get an attack of opportunity if it goes by me? Or... Well, they're not actually moving past you. Me. Yeah, oh. they're attacking you. They're basically moving in position to engage you in the doorway. Bitch. So they are going to be using their multi attack, which is three strikes for melee. So three. Yes. <laughs> they get yes. <laughs> Good thing you get the cleric right next to you. Right. So you get two. Two scimitar swings and, a, and a, an attack with a dagger in the other hand. So here we go. First swing from the scimitar. is a 9. It's a miss. Second swing is a 23, which is a hit. 4, 7, slashing. And then the stabby for the finisher. 11. Which doesn't hit. And that is Marticia's turn. Can I use my reaction? You certainly can. Well, let me find it. Hold on. All right, I'm going to cast Hellish Rebuke. 
Excellent choice. I'm gonna yell at her very angrily in <laughs> Infernal. Fuck you, bitch! Mm-hmm. Alright, so let me do the deck save. Yeah, I don't know why that's rolling twice, but uh, there you go. Alright, so I rolled a five for the deck save, so that did not pass. So I basically eat eight damage from Artisha's face. All right, Talia, you are up. All right. Um, I have line of sight to Dick Waddle over here, right? Dick Waddle slash Tiga? Yeah, that person. I couldn't think of their name. I'm sorry. I'm bad with names. No, that's fine. You're saying you can attack them or get past I'm them? I'm saying I have line of sight to them. Yes. Yeah, you do. There we go. Uh... What do they look like again? Describe this person to me, please. So they are like a stocky humanoid female. And that's all I've really got in terms of their features. They are wearing those copper slash bronze, potentially lightning bolt bracers mm. and are currently wielding a great axe. Ah, okay. Hmm. I'm going to cast Phantasmal Force on her. All right. It's a lot. And I'm going to create the illusion that her great act I Okay, great axe is on fire. So basically, you just gotta try to pass an intelligence check, an intelligence save rather, mm -hmm. to see if they are affected by it or not. Yes. So if they pass, no effect. Boom. But then, if the last paragraph is key here as well, so an affected target is so convinced that they can actually take damage from the illusion. All right. So my rolls are an 18. So they succeed. God damn it. No. So that axe is hot. Like butter. Well. There went my action. So bonus action, disengage, and just move action to get the phone. Cause that didn't work. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. See you, sucker. Bye. All right, next person. Alrighty. Azzy, you get to go in WrestleMania 27's main ring the Royal Rumble is on, but the bell hasn't rung yet for any other contenders to join the fight. Uh, I will go ahead and use my attack. All right. Well, at least one of them hit. Yep. For three fucking points of damage. And I will try to knock him down. Okay. So, what's that? A strength save, right? Yeah, I think it's, a, what is it, contested athletics rolls? Basically, yeah, you get to roll strength, and then he can roll dex or strength, depending. But I'm going to oh. have him roll strength. He's stronger than me, so. Yes, he passed. He has a 10. Oh, God damn it. These fucking <laughs> shit rolls tonight. Jesus. Um, I'm going to action surge to go ahead and make an additional two attack. Okay. Or another 
another 14, I'm hoping. Yes, correct. You got it. Um, let's see. Where are my limited use? Fury where he dies. He doesn't know that. Where the fuck? Um. I will. Like, so when you go prone, is it like, what is it to get up? Is it just like a full action or half your movement speed? Yep. That's it. That's it. That's dumb. Well, I mean, it comes with other advantages and disadvantages. If the target is yeah. being attacked by melee, they're a disadvantage. Yeah, it just doesn't help me here. That's why it's dumb. Fair enough. Um, that's it. That's all I'll do. <clears throat> Fair enough. So it is Bax's turn. And he kind of gives you a hearty laugh. Like a crazy pirate berserker would. And then he's going to uh, multi-attack you with his spear. So he gets three swings. Or pokes. Three. Pokes, I oh, guess, fuck. theoretically. Man, he's, he's a big boy. Yeah, but he only got one last time. <laughs> because, I opted, because I opted to just attack with the spear instead of multi-attack. Because I was feeling a little forgiving. Because he's, he's a challenge rating five individual and it's just you in the basement. All right, so. Thanks for the mercy. <laughs> first attack is a 15. Doesn't hit. Second attack is a creep. Of course it is. <laughs> We're back to being cursed. Oh, God. All right, so you take... 17 damage. Holy fuck! Yep. The, 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 the hit on itself, the, the damage roll in the spear itself is 2d6 plus 4. So. <laughs> Alright, so. Next and final attack is a 12. He misses. Wait, was that 17 minus the 3? Or. Nope, with it. So if you subtract three, it's 14. Caster sliding in there for that. A little bit of <clears throat> shade. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Oh, See, minutes. I googled WrestleMania 27, and now my search history is going to be screwed for the next two years. Thanks, <laughs> no problem. All right, so now it's Ash's turn, and the question that I'll pose to everyone, because it's currently, what, almost 9 my time, which means it's almost 11 for the East Coasters, is do you guys want to hold here in combat until next week and continue, or do you want to continue for a little more and do another round of combat, or what would you like to do? I'd like to hold off till next week. I would as well. I agree. My, I, I, I literally can't continue with my rolls. <laughs> 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 the rolls that you're getting and the rolls I'm dice. getting just isn't working. As it would That's like fair. a week for the dice to reset, please. That's yeah. fair. Then we will hold it in hiatus how we are right now. And I'll catch everyone next week, the same bat time, to continue our little brawl at the Wayside Inn. Um, next week on Dragon Ball Z exactly <laughs> so interestingly enough I didn't exactly have this encounter completely prepped because I didn't think we were actually going to do it yet until like next week but YOLO Surprise, bitch. YOLO